So, okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Arturo Campos Oliveira. I am a PhD candidate at the Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands, and then I'm here to talk about a MEMS Coriolis Mass Flow Sensing System where we combine both drive and sense interface. So this is the outline of my presentation, and uh, just straightforward to, to the introduction. Essentially, if, if we talk about very small uh, mass flow ranges down to one gram per hour, uh, these types of applications are dominated by thermal mass flow sensors, where essentially you have these uh, heater. Here you have the, the, the tube where the mass flow goes through it. You have the heater, two temperature sensors. So the fluid will carry the heat, and then the temperature difference between these two uh, temperature sensors is a measure of uh, mass flow. So uh, the good thing about these, the advantages of these types of uh, thermal mass flow sensors is that they are high resolution and high stable, highly stable for very small uh, uh, flow ranges because yeah, temperature sensors, they are uh, very mature these days. Uh, but the downside of it is that uh, when we are using heat conductivity or volumetric mass flow meters, they, they are measuring mass flow by, a by an indirect way of measuring mass flow. So they really need to be calibrated for each type of fluid. So they are very sensitive to property, uh, to process, input, temperature, pressure, whatever, and also to the fluid properties. So we could really solve that the, with the Coriolis mass flow sensor, which solves these types of problems. Where now we are measuring uh, a Coriolis force induced by the mass flow. So we are measuring something that really relates to, to, to the mass, which is a force. And so we can really say that we are, we are using now a true mass flow meter where we measure mass and mass doesn't change with any uh, uh, input pressure, temperature, or anything in the system. But the downside is that these types of uh, uh, mass flow meters, they are very popular for uh, a large mass flow ranges. And so as we, as we decrease this flow range, uh, we, uh, we end up with low resolution and also low uh, mass flow stability. So here our goal is to really uh, improve the, uh, the current uh, uh, resolution and instability of the, uh, the Coriolis mass flow sensor through both MEMS technology and also uh, dedicated electronics. So essentially here I'm all about smiley or sad faces, so I just want to make the Coriolis mass flow sensor all happy. Um, so for the, for the device, the main sensing element used in this work, essentially this is a, this is a, a resonator, where it's a resonance sensor where we have two uh, main resonance modes. One is the, is the drive, is the twist mode, where I call the drive axis, where the, is the mode where we intentionally drive the sensor. And another is the, is the swing mode or the sense axis, where uh, when there is mass flow going through the sensor, this mode will be excited by the Coriolis force. And so this is basically a silicon nitride suspended tube, where I have these two integrated capacitors just to, to read out the motion. And to drive the sensor in the twist mode, we actually drive it through the Lorentz force-based drive, where we have this fixed uh, magnetic, external magnetic field, and then we have one metal track above the tube, and when we apply an AC current through it, we, are, uh, we have the equivalent uh, Lorentz force, and then we can drive uh, the sensor into motion. So this is how the sensor looks like. We have this window of four millimeter by 2.6 millimeter, and there you can see the two uh, readout capacitors. So just to give you a better idea of how the movement uh, happens, so this is when we have the, the, the sensor being driven by in the, the twist mode, and then when there is mass flow, we have the swing motion, and uh, in the end, this is uh, amplified motion, but for the, to, to the Coriolis force, this is very small, but these two uh, motions will happen at the same time. Um, now, if we look at the uh, at these signals in the time domain, essentially we have these, the, the thick line, this is the, the both C1 and C2 at omega t, when there is no flow, and then when there is flow, we have this other motion, and these two signals will experience some opposite phase shift. And from and through the phase shift, we can measure mass flow. So here we can see that these signals are differential, while the, the Coriolis-induced uh, motion is common. So we need to, to measure phase shift. For that, we need a reference, so we can simply get the difference of the two signals and then compare use the difference as a reference to measure the phase. So here, just a note, phase difference is a measure of mass flow, while when we have, uh, this is a mechanical resonator. So when we put uh, gases or liquids, we are changing the mass of this resonator, and so we are changing the frequency. And so the frequency is also a measure of, uh, of density. 
So for the combined driving sense interface, as I said, this is uh, a resonator, or we can really say that this is a mass flow gyroscope, but so we, we need to have a drive loop for that. And previously, the way that we did it was we have these two metal tracks that are uh, above the sensor, and one metal track, we apply the AC current to drive the sensor, and we have a parallel metal track to it. And then this is just a, a floating wire that will experience some change in the magnetic field. So we have a, an induced EMF. And from this EMF, you can just amplify it and feed it back to the sensor to make the, the, the sen to drive the resonator into, uh, into the resonance. Uh, and essentially, this is a very small signal because this uh, magnetic field is, is, uh, is very weak. And also, the drive amplitude is not so high. It's not so large. So uh, this will be, we can expect this signal to be very small. So we need to amplify it a lot to get the amplitude that we want. Uh, essentially, what, what this leads is to a low SNR drive uh, signal. And so then, since we care about uh, frequency stability, we also want uh, to be very, very, uh, the frequency stability to be high. Uh, this, will not, this is not good, so we need to find another solution. And one simple solution is by simply use the sense interface. Since, as I said, the difference of these two signals are actually just a signal proportional or uh, a signal that represents the drive motion. So this is just a capacitive readout where we just designed the sense interface to be uh, very low noise to achieve the high resolution. And here we just upmodulate the signal away from the one of F noise of the DEC to V converter. And we just need an additional low pass filters and the modulators as I will show. And so this difference between these two signals is actually the reference. And then we can just use this reference to measure the phase shift of both. And we can simply just use these two channels to incorporate, incorporate these two channels into the drive loop and so combining drive and sense interface. So how we actually implemented these, uh, uh, the circuits to implement this. So we have these above the tube, we have also the, the tracks to, to connect to the, to the, to the um, electrodes of the readout caps that are, are also parallel to the drive track. So here we use one megahertz, uh, 20 volts peak to peak square wave to just op modulate the, the capacitance change away from the one of F noise of the uh, front end uh, amplifiers. So I have these two channels with, uh, with a charge amplifier. You, uh, it's just a low noise capacitance to voltage converter, it's a simple charge amplifier. Then we just have these um, uh, single to differential converter to then just demodulate the signal by using uh, a passive demodulator or in this case a chopper. Uh, and just a uh, low pass filter just to filter out the, the chopping harmonics. And in this case, uh, there is also a trade off between the carrier, or the chopping frequency, and this uh, low pass filter because we don't want to, uh, to uh, we want to avoid access phase shift at the output because we are measuring phase and also because we want to close the loop. And so by simply giving it a 90 degrees phase shift just to, to satisfy the oscillation requirements and controlling the amplitude with just a simple AGC to the amplitude that we want. It's everything is ready and we can just use the difference as a reference of the IQ demodulator and then just measure a phase with that. So for the PCB implementation, um, essentially this is the PCB. Uh, we uh, implemented it with a uh, standard uh, commercial off-the-shelf components. It operates uh, with a single five volt supply. And this is just a, 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 a main PCB where we have everything, uh, all the electronics involved and uh, here you can see the magnets for the small magnets for for the Lawrence drive, and we have this small PCB where I have also other types of sensors and sensors that we want to measure. So this is easy to just measure uh, several samples, and then we just connect it to, to the main board and uh, and measure everything. For the fluidity connectors, uh, we have uh, uh, below the the large the, the main PCB, we have these three D printed fluidity connectors where we can just uh, fix it to the, to the main PCB and then we attach the small PCB to it, we are already making the fluidy connectors, fluidy connections. So for the mass flow measurements, we did measurements with uh, using nitrogen gas. This is phase shift, as I, sh as I showed before, and this is mass flow from zero to 0.75 uh, grams per hour. Uh, and here, as we expected, we have this opposite phase shift behavior. And here, since we have two capacitors, we get twice the sensitivity. And uh, we just, in this case, we are just using the difference of the signals as a reference to this phase measurement. And this, we just use nitrogen gas because uh, it, it, this is just a proof of, of concept, just to, to see if we uh, wouldn't have any l significant loss in sensitivity. 
So for the uh, zero uh, input measurement or the zero stability, essentially we are not putting any flow through the sensor. We are just uh, filling the, the, the tube with nitrogen gas and looking at how its output drifts with time. So for the, here is, here in the first plot, you see this is mass flow and this is time for 80 second measurement, uh, uh, 80 seconds measurement time and uh, a bandwidth of one hertz. The one sigma is 2.6 milligrams uh, per hour. And this is around 3x three, three uh, less compared to the commercially available stainless steel uh, Coriolis mass flow meter, which is, which is from Bronkhorst. And uh, yeah, this is the, the, uh, the lowest range mass flow meter that you can find in the market. And for the frequency stability, which then translates into density uh, resolution or stability, we can really expect to be uh, very stable because for the Coriolis force, this is a common mode, so anything coupling to the sensor, uh, we will see as a drift here. But for the frequency, this is differential, so we are getting rid of any unwanted common mode signal. So th this is very stable, and it is ADX uh, more stable compared to previous implementations uh, that were based on the uh, induced EMF. So to conclude, uh, I presented a MEMS Coriolis mass flow sensing system. Um, Basically, since we are already designing a very low noise uh, interface to, to read out the, capacit uh, the, the capacitance change due to the drive and, uh, and the sense motion, uh, we just combine it with the drive loop and uh, this simplifies the design and also improves the frequency stability. Um, the proposal system, should, since this is a Coriolis mass flow sensor, it should be able to, to operate from both. We know that it operates actually from uh, liquids to gases. But in this case, since we just wanted to, to show the concept and the, uh, it operates, we just showed the measurements for nitrogen gas. And even though it presents state-of-the-art performance compared with the commercially available Coriolis mass flow meters, there is still a lot of uh, things to do, such as uh, implemented, uh, have an integrated version of, of these and uh, some other, other stuff. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.